Liam Davis, professional boxer, undefeated. I got a bloodline of fighters. My great granddad, my granddad, my father. I've got you down here at 15 fights, seven KOs. Currently the British and European champion. When are you going to become world champion? It's out of my control, really. I'd like to believe 2024 I'll be a world champion, but I will become a world champion. It's just a matter of when. Liam Davis is a undefeated professional fighter who is currently the British and European champion. He's got his sights set on becoming a world champion. We speak about this, his goals, and also the politics within boxing. Be happy, never content, and make sure you are definitely subscribing. Right, guys, welcome back to the podcast, Steve and Sully Study. Um, don't do many Zoom podcasts these days, but I've got a really fantastic guest in front of me, a guy called Liam Davis, who is a professional boxer, undefeated, and I'm about to have a really, really good conversation with this chap. So thank you very much for your time, Liam, and um, looking forward to, to talking, mate. Yeah, thanks for having me on. No worries, no worries. Um, Black Eye, last week you had, you had your fight, you're undefeated still, correct? Yeah, correct. Um, so currently I've got you down here at 15 fights, uh, seven KOs, which is pretty much half half the opponents that you thought you, 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 you knock out. Currently the British and European champion and clearly got your, your sights set on becoming a world champion, Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. So you're 27 years of age, Liam. My question to you is, there's a lot of avenues that young men can go down. You know, different careers, different opportunities, different different kind of jobs and occupations. Why did you decide to become a professional boxer? So for me, it was a bit different, really. I grew up into boxing. Um, from a young lad, my granddad boxed many years ago. He run a boxing gym in Donington where we live. My dad was a professional boxer, so I grew up with the gloves on, you could say, to be honest. It's always been my main passion, something I've always loved to do. Played a bit of football when I was young, but boxing was always my main priority. Always wanted to be a boxer. So yeah, I got pictures of a young lad, two, three years old, the bed guards on. He used to have one of them punch things. I always remember my nan and granddad got at me from the market. You know, you stand on like the wood, it's like a bag. Yeah. I used to draw faces on that and uh, yeah. give it a few smacks and draw some tears on after a round or two. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, boxing was always for me. It, it was hard, bro. When, when obviously, I got older into my teens and, like you say, you, you, your attitude can not be very positive. And I was close to walking away from the sport a few times with a good family around me and a very pushing father. He uh, kept me on the right path and yeah, I'm here now. I'm very grateful for the yeah. good times and the bad because it hasn't been easy. Like anything worth having in life, it's not going to come easy, but I stuck it out and um, seem to be reaping the rewards now. Yeah, well, you're definitely, you're definitely doing that, mate. You, you just mentioned something now about anything worth having in life. There's always going to be that test, you know, testing times and there's going to be the struggle and you've got to have the perseverance that was kind of the tone that you were using what what would you say has been like the hardest challenge for you up until this moment um sticking in a positive mindset really because a lot of people see the good times but that's a, a lot of well human net is the way i see it human nature we promote the good times and we try to hide the bad don't we and there's been plenty of bad times in my life. I lost family members that are close to me. Like I said, my granddad was my coach to start with. I lost my granddad when I was 14. And uh, things didn't seem the same for years. And, yeah, growing up, my parents, we never had much, lived in a council estate. My mum had a lot of problems growing up with, like, boyfriends. We went in refuges. And, yeah, it's just life, isn't it? It throws stuff at you and seems like we dealt with a lot and yeah i've come through but i'd say the hardest was just keep going even some most days you feel like you're getting nowhere and you're questioning yourself why am i even bothering or what am i doing this for there's no money in it at the start you come 17 18 you get a job but never really had a great job because i always had to do the times around this boxing mm. so 
it, yeah, it was times I went many years without and very lucky to have the people, friends and family around me that did support me because, you see, with football, any sport or and a lot of, well, in sport a lot you see it where you get these un- unbelievable footballers, unbelievable boxers or whatever sport it is and it comes to 17, 18 and they start experiencing life and things don't go your way. A lot of talent walks away from it because priorities come first, don't they? Mm. I always kept my main priority boxing, and I think that was the best thing I ever done, really. Yeah, yeah, uh, and and you'll know more than me. I mean, I've had my own a uh, few boxing fights myself, never uh, never a pro, and uh, even just doing it as a bit of a passion project, you still get the injuries. But when you're a pro- proper professional that you live and breathe eat boxing it can be problematic right because you're not only dealing with your own mental kind of psyche which is remain positive remain focused don't get distracted by what's going on outside of boxing but then you've got the injuries right so it only takes you to destroy your hand or an arm or or something like that and that could be your that could be your career and your revenue stream gone forever does that ever concern you? Yeah, of course. It's um, it's something that you really have to be careful of, and what you do. It's um, especially at these times now. I'm in a great position, and I got my foot in the door really to one win a world title, two financially be secure for life, and I can't afford to mess up or mess around and get any injuries out my own fault so it's about being careful it's about taking the right steps um it's funny isn't it because like boxing and it's not long ago i took an insurance out if i do hurt myself because um yeah you have no one really knowledge you not like teaches you the knowledge of these things but luckily for me my wife's very clever and um yeah she's these stuff is never what you want but it happened it can happen so yeah, yeah. i'll be avoiding it happening yeah the best yeah. possibly way i can but if it does happen then it's nothing i can do yeah the um i always like i'm 37 right so i've got 10 years on you and i'm about to become 38 and i feel like i'm i'm in a i'm in an age category i'm not old i'm not young but I, I'm also in that weird part where I was old enough to remember life before social media, but I'm obviously, I was in it when it just started coming through, like the Instagrams, the Facebooks, now you've got TikToks, LinkedIn, etc. And I, I always talk to my guests like, you know, did you prefer life, obviously if they're old, old enough, did you prefer life before social media? Do you prefer life now with social media? And the reason why I mention this, Liam, is because it's a bit of a blessing and a curse, right? I think a lot of professional athletes, including boxers, have the benefit of promoting themselves on their social media channels. And that's really good because you can sell tickets, you can sell your brand, you can, you can develop opportunities. You could also have beef with other professional boxers on that social media. Yeah. Whereas back in the day, Mike Tyson would have to go into a press conference in order to have a beef with someone because there was no social media, right? He would have to go through the normal media channels. Equally, at the same time, social media can become a bit of a distraction. So, so my question to you is, bar just the boxing, is it a bit of a spinning plate scenario where you've got to be fit, healthy, nutrition, rest, um, you know, promoting yourself, selling yourself, having a beef online. I mean, how do you juggle all those elements, Liam? Do you know, yeah, I just roll with, it's how I always rolled in my life, just being myself and uh, if I've got anything to say, say it. And I've never really, I have some messages people give me stick and at the start, it's a bit, I used to get wound up, but, now I just take it as a pinch. The internet's like a fake world, really, isn't it? Like it you is. said, it could be it can be the best thing. It can make people's lives, but sadly, it can break people's lives as well. And mm. 
everyone makes mistakes and um if you're well known and the it's going to be pa- plastered everywhere over the paper the internet and made the mockery so i don't really get too involved with it i've got like you see all these boxes with all these followers and stuff i'm not that's that's to me that's looking for fame i'm not ever really chasing fame happy with my little life in telford the wife the dogs got an house like i'm blessed do you know what i mean i got a good family i don't really care what alan from doncaster whoever's got to say about me because i sleep well at night as long as my mom my friends and family are proud then that's all that really matters but yeah. it is good to promote like my dad said when he was a boxer, he didn't get the in, the internet wasn't around then, and he didn't sell as many tickets. And so, yeah, it's ups and downs to it, isn't it? Yeah, you mentioned earlier two things. You said becoming world champion, and then also financial freedom or, or something. You said, and is that the like the kind of two big pull for you becoming world champion? becoming the best in your division or multiple divisions, but also the financial rewards that are attached to becoming a world champion, Liam. Yeah. And and these rewards, it's, it's hard, isn't it? Because the rewards I want ain't really for me. I said before, like my mum and me, we, me and my family, we've gone without for years and money money's never been a thing. I've always been happy, but it's never been there. So you know, I want to spin that around you know what i mean i want my young brothers and sisters i want to be able to look after them i want to look after my wife who grew up on a council estate do you know what i mean my nan my dad i want i don't want everything i just want to if they want it i want to be able to help them with it and that's a big motivation for me so i'm not saying oh, it's about money but if it is about money it's not money for myself it's money to secure do you know what I mean? We years ago, we've been out like the gas, electric's gone. We got nothing. Do you know what I mean? This, these are the times that we were in before. So, if I can make sure that never happens again, that would be a massive achievement for mine. And give back. I've done a lot of like um, every a couple of years ago. I sold my kit and stuff for charity, and I give back to the hospital, uh, like the kids in hospital. I had give them like loads of presents and last year I done like um I said about refugees I wanted to find so I got in contact with the council and found like moms that are in refugees have had to move from their hometown and I think there was like 17 kids and I give them all vouchers so their moms could go shopping at Christmas and get them presents you know what I mean things like that giving back to things make me feel good yeah. So, you know, in, in, in one extreme, you've got someone like a Floyd Mayweather, right, who rebranded himself later on in his career, Money Mayweather. And he's, he's clearly about, obviously, boxing, becoming the best the, the best ever, TBE, but also about the, the money. That was part of his persona. And he wanted the Bugattis, the Ferraris, the private jets, etc. A Ferrari, a private jet, that's not something nah. that does it for you, nah. Liam, no? Nah, honestly. Not, not, not for me. Um, things, material things like that. Like I said, I've actually, um, I've been a professional. I've been British champion for two, two something years. Yeah, like two years, and uh, only just brought myself a nice car. Um, I think it's a couple of weeks ago. So, and that's and one of my coaches said that just shows that me. me uh, what's the word? you're not materialistic or you're humble you know I mean? grounded yeah yeah and i'm not but um i, I just don't want to lie and say it's not about the money because oh the main well, that is one of my main motivations to secure for the people i love to make sure they ne- never go without yeah and be a world champion is is would be great yeah yeah um but, uh, what i'm getting from you is um if you like one person can say it's about the money and then the other person that could also say it's about the money, but one person is like a Floyd Mayweather, which wants to buy everything, which is outrageous. 
and the other person just wants to have a decent life where you're not struggling, you know, the lights are not going off, you know, you can go down the supermarket and buy what you want, you can buy nice clothes and you can have a nice few nice holidays. That's the kind of person that kind of you, you strike me as, Liam. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah and, I want... And, and giving back. Giving back, yeah. Just I've done this now since... I had my first fight at 11, so 16 years I've been boxing. I was training for many years as a kid, like always in the gym. 16 years, and I just want out of my life and all this hard work to... That would be the most satisfying thing to say, look, like I've helped my mum. I've got anything my brothers and sister need. Yeah. Make sure there's all food in the cupboards and fridge at home, and yeah. That would be all be worth it for me. Guys, I wanted to hop on here to once again thank the sponsors of this week's podcast, I Secure Vehicles. When we were searching around for sponsors for the channel, we honestly wanted to get a brand, a company that would give massive amount of value to our audience. And that is definitely I Secure Vehicles. They have a wide range of products which are designed to keep your vehicle, your asset safe and secure. Some of those products are dash cameras, undetected immobilizers, and car tracking systems. Head over to iSecure to look at their products and make sure you say that the Stephen Sully Study podcast sent you there. I want to ask you this question, right? In, in business, so some entrepreneurial podcast channels frequently ask the question of, what is the big difference between a billionaire to a millionaire, right? And obviously, the, the obvious answer is, is the amount of money, but more about the IQ, more about the skill set or the experience. So my question to you is a similar one, which is, what is going to be the big difference between someone in your position, which is European champion undefeated, to a world-class, undefeated, unrivaled boxing champion? What is the big difference? Well, the big difference for me, I, I, I see the difference. I, it's just the opportunity getting it, isn't it? Mm -hmm. you got to work hard. I, I feel like I work hard enough to be a world champion now. I feel like I work as hard as anyone. But the massive difference is you're on bigger shows, you're more um, advertised. Yeah, yeah it's, it's more just... Um, I think that's where you get finally financially set up when you are a world champion like that mm. but in boxing terms it's a childhood dream isn't it that everyone set out to set out to do so yeah yeah it's the big fights in america and to me it's all memories in it i'd like to go abroad and fight and have people that have come watch me in the local town hall or the local leisure center to come into somewhere like vegas yeah is um a massive difference yeah so I know every single boxer predominantly always talks about becoming world champion and unify their division, yeah? That's that's the dream, right? To go out the sport, maybe undefeated, have legendary fights, become this household name and just be recognised as one of the, one of the greats, like, like a Hall of Famer. But you know what? When I've watched a lot of boxing programmes, I've been around boxing pretty much all my life since I was about, well, 11, 12 years of age been an amateur fighter as well. Um, and I've had a lot of boxers on my podcast as well, Liam. There's an affinity, there's an alliance with the British belt. You know, a mm -hmm. lot of the a lot of the boxers, I'm not saying they, they hold it in the same same regard as a world a world title, but there's there's this there's this draw towards that that British belt. And I interviewed Bradley Skeep good friend of mine and um, he won obviously the uh, British title and I held that belt for the first ever time and I could actually really see why so many boxers are drawn to that belt in your own words you're a British champion why are so many boxers drawn to to, to that to that British title Liam I think that's the pinnacle of British boxing that belt like when I set out my I didn't set out on most boxers from Britain I can speak for myself, but I'm sure many others. Uh, when you set out, you don't set out to be a world champion or this. You take it bit by bit. But the main target is the British, and it was for me. 
the British title was always the one to start with. And then when I won it, then you start looking forward. But how many great fights you've seen over the years and um, great boxers that have held the belt. It's a very prestige belt in Britain and in the world, really. It gets you a good ranking as well. So, you know, it's a really big belt. Yeah. And the actual craftsmanship that goes into that belt. I mean, if, if people will watch it on TV and it looks nice, but when you, when you hold that thing, it's a proper, yeah. proper, proper, proper medal. You know, it's like um, uh, uh, incredible. Yeah, for sure. It's a beauty of a belt. Yeah. Um, just pivoting the conversation slightly, Liam, all right? Um, I know money isn't number one, but again, you know, whether you're a boxer, a footballer, a golfer, whether you're someone in business or whether you work at Tesco's, the reality is all of us have to feed ourselves and our family, our wives, our children. And the only way you can do that is by making money, right? So if someone's going to give you a lot of money and you're going to do the same job anyway and you're going to work really hard regardless, you might as well try and go for, 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 for the big money. And where I'm leading this conversation is, the rise of the Middle Eastern money, you know, Saudi Arabia, these big shows, you know, people are getting some serious, serious, serious money now. Does that kind of excite you, Liam? Because you're in those conversations now. Yeah, I, I hope I am. I'd like to go out there and fight, yeah. One, not just for the money. As I said before, what a memory that would be in 20 years to come when it's all done and you're there in the bars having a beer, do you know what I mean? And you're there with some of the lads, your mates that went there. So, yeah, I'd definitely like to go. Definitely. Hopefully next year we can do it. I'd like to go on the Fury Usyk one. That'd be massive. Yeah, that'd be incredible. Um, on that note, who do you think is going to win, Fury or Usyk? I want Fury to win, but I just think Usyk will win. I just think he's a phenom phenomenal human being. I just don't see how you can go against. Well, I hope, I hope, I want Fury to win. But yeah. if you had to say to me, pick or choose, life or death, I'd go with Usyk. Yeah. Um, and on the note of Tyson Fury, who honestly won that fight, Tyson Fury or Francis Nagano? Oh, do you know for me? Do you know what it is for me? I thought it was bad how close it was. But honestly, I'm probably one of the worst judges in the world. I don't know how to judge these um, fights. But yeah, I just, after, I wouldn't have been surprised if Ngannou got it. Like, I thought he got it. I thought he won or a draw. But like I say, I ain't the best judge, to be honest. It's when he <laughs> dropped him, man, I couldn't believe it. He's like, Either way, Ngannou shook up the world, didn't he? That's for sure. Mm. Would you surprise that his boxing ability? Yeah. Oh, definitely. His his boxing ability surprised me, and obviously, I always knew he was strong, but he, he's obviously mega strong. And um, yeah, I think that's the most fury he's ever been hurt. Yeah, I I I personally feel. Um, and I could be completely misreading it, but I personally feel that he probably underestimated him. He probably took it a lot more lightly than he actually said building up to the fight. For sure. Probably didn't train as hard. And do you know what? I think this might actually help him now with Usyk because I think if he would have walked into the uh, Nagano fight, half-hearted, which he did, and glided through that fight and knocked him out, I think he would have taken that same sentiment to this next fight, and it would have been it, it, that would have been his downfall. I think he kind of embarrassed himself to a certain level, like he's fighting yeah. another big big man, you know. And hats off to anyone that does that, and on a big stage, I get that. But someone that has got his skill set, his, his experience, and someone that is undefeated, he should have really, in my opinion, done probably a better job. And I think it comes down to his training. So I think that. That kind of, in a weird way, serves him for the Fury and Usyk fight. Yeah, I think I agree with you. I think it's um, he took his foot off the pedal and he thought it was going to be a lot easier than what it turned out to be. But he's definitely done him a favour and given him a kick up the ass for this Usyk fight, yeah. which I think he'll need. Yeah. But now I agree. With me. Yeah. Um, 
look, I, I don't want to keep on talking about the money, but it's just because it's so it's highlighted so much in the sport at the moment, right? It, not only because of the Saudi money, but also because of this new wave of boxing, which is influencers, YouTube, YouTubers, etc. Talk about Fury, Tommy Fury, right? Fought Jake Paul, fought KSI. And he's earned more money in those two fights than he ever has done fighting what we call real real fighters. Does that ever attempt you? If someone like a, I don't know, a KSI offered you out, Liam, and said, I'll fight you, I think I could beat you, would that tempt you just to go down that route? Yeah, definitely. Who's this is that guy there is? I can't think of his name. Uh Steen the Great or something. Okay. I see him I I'd I'd love one of that. I'd smash his head, in, but <laughs> it don't seem realistic. Like obviously it probably never happened, but yeah, of course. The thing is, it's I, I think it's a load of crap. But if the money call comes, we're all going to answer, aren't we? Do you yeah. know what I mean? So that's just the way it is. I don't hate on them. I think they're a load of shit. All of them. They're all poor. None of them would win a British title. No chance. But. They're all in their coin, man, so fair play to them. Yeah, I was going to say, actually, from a professional boxer standpoint, is the whole YouTube boxing world, is it a good thing for boxing overall or is it something that has been damaging boxing as a as a sport? I don't know, really. I never really think into it. It's, it doesn't affect me the way I sleep at night, so I don't really take too much interest. But, yeah, each to their own web, like... I think it's brought eyes to boxing, but maybe not in the best of ways. But no one's going to listen to me anyway. So <laughs> I just don't get too involved or take too much interest in it. I think fair play, they're earning money. And um, yeah, I just think none of them will ever be a world champion. Or They just know how to talk, don't they? Like Jake Paul saying, if I Canelo. And so just publicity stuff. And that's, that's their business. That's what they know how to do. So leave yeah. them to it. Yeah, yeah. Um, the Saudi money. There's obviously this term of sports washing, right? They're just chucking hundreds of millions, if not more, at the sport or multiple sports, football included, to to kind of really become this area of uh, the go-to play for 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 watching sport, right? Do you also think equally that could actually damage the sport long term because basically every big event is is only ever going to be in Saudi Arabia? I mean, you've got to remember, Francis Nagano against Fury was over there. In December, you've got Joshua against uh, Watu, was it? Watu? Walling, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, then you've got Wilder against Parker. You've got all of these great people on, like yeah. Bivol against Arthur, etc., and then in February, you've got Fury against Usyk. I mean, it's just kind of set precedent now that all these major events are only ever going to be in Saudi Arabia. Is that wrong, Liam? It looks like it. Do you know every time I think of it, though? Do you know how it comes? How much of a minute? They could end world hunger, man. Like, they could end so much like bad in the world. that That's how I look at it. Like, what a waste. Mm. It's like it's good that they're all it, and I know they're two different things but there's that much money that ain't getting generated it's not like they're promoting it thingy. they're just chucking money into it they could end world hunger man just think of that how, like, how mad the world is that this is, this is the way it goes yeah. it baffles me yeah, I, 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 I guess they're probably their 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 counter to that, and I'm just completely taking a wild guess as as a uh, as a businessman myself. They could end up in what, what world hunger, definitely. Their money, they're going to say, has been generated from their natural resources and the investment surrounding that. So if they were to take investment money into something that they're not going to get a return on investment, and it is morally right that they should do it, they. Because they're not going to get a return on investment, that's why they won't do it. And the reason why they're doing this sports washing is because eventually they will get a return on that investment later on down the chain. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I get what you're saying, yeah. Yeah. But it's just every time I think of how much money these guys are getting, I'm like, wow, man. Just think what else you could do, how much better things you could do with it. Yeah. 
So, um, okay, so you're, 20, you're, you're 27 years of age. In your honest op opinion, Liam, when are you going to become world champion? Oh, it's hard, man, because that kind of thing is out of my control, really. But I'd like to believe 2024 I'll be a world champion. Okay. But I will become a world champion. It's just a matter of when. And I'm going to be patiently waiting for that time. So, yeah. Well, I, I'm, not, I, I'm not in the room with you where I resume. And I only know you via this conversation, but also doing my a little bit of homework uh, on, on social media. And when you said that, I honestly do believe that you believe that you're going to become world champion and you've got that conviction. Can I ask you, how do you get that belief? What actually gives you that belief to think that you're going to become world champion, Liam? Like, why are you so convincing? Just think everything happens for a reason, to be honest. Like, if you go back, like I said, i got a bloodline of fighters. My great-granddad, my granddad, my father. And um, we've seen plenty of good boxers in around Telford. And we had one champion, Richie Woodall, and not since then. And I just see it like the script's written sometimes, you know what I mean? With mm -hmm. a lot of right decisions, the script is there. So as long as I keep doing the right things, training hard, and right. just think it's destined to be, honestly, that's just my where my belief comes from like I'm, I work hard and if I didn't train so hard didn't live the right lifestyle and have the people around me then maybe I would because honestly like if you asked me 10 years ago when I was 17 18 I'd have been like yeah like hope hoping but I wouldn't be it really probably believing do you know what I mean because it was different and it's just come a long, long, long way in the ring, obviously with my performances, out the ring with my life decisions. And yeah, and then the history of how involved the family has been in with boxing. Um, just think this is like the reward and for my whole family. And I'm going to be the one that does it for us. So yeah, I just can't see anything stopping me, to be honest. Yeah. I know uh, Richie Woodall. I interviewed him in Sheffield. Um, yeah, really, really good guy he is. Um, do, do you ever like, because 27, right? You know, you're a young man, but in, as, as far as sports are concerned, you're, not, you're definitely not old, but you're, you know, there are, there are world champions at 21, 22 years of age within boxing, right? You know, there, mm. there, there has been previously. I mean, Mike Tyson was a, Youngest heavyweight champion, I think, of all time at 20 years of age. Deontay, uh, Deontay Davis, he became world champion at a very young age. So, do you ever think about life after boxing? Like, do you think at 35 years of age, you're going to hang it up? And what's going to be the next ch chapter for you, Liam? Mm, I ain't really thought about it because box uh, boxing, I take each day as it comes. You know what I mean? Can be here today, gone tomorrow, so try not to plan too far ahead but I'm just going to crack on with this for as long as I can and after well, the main aim is always just to be happy in it man that's the main aim in life just to be happy around family healthy happy and um, so that's the main aim always but I, I, I'd always be involved with the boxing like I said we got the boxing club my granddad run it um, when he passed away my dad took over so I'll definitely, when I'm older and done with boxing, be involved in the club and carry on the family tradition, for sure. Nice. But by your own uh, family, uh, Liam, and also you mentioned about Richie Wood Woodall, I mean, are, are there are there boxers that have come before you or even still fighting today that you look at and you think they're people that I emulate to a degree, you've obviously got your own style, or I really look up to? Is there anyone that, really has resonated with your style and the way you fight? Um, yeah, there's a few. I used to like Linares. Actually retired now. He's dropped off a bit. I watch many, many are good boxers. I, I like um, Dalton Smith, who's boxes now. Very smooth and good. you got good style like Pat McCormack. It's just some people, obviously, it's like your stance and that, in it? And... 
Yeah, I watch a lot of boxing. I love watching boxing. There's very good fighters coming up. And I always say, uh, i got a young brother who's 20, 22 now. And uh, he's had 414. And he'll be the next best thing for sure. Is he that good, yeah? Yeah, I, I really, I honestly always say it. And it's, it's, it comes across like quite biased because he's my brother. But honestly, yeah, Bradley Thompson, he'll be, he'll be one to watch out for, for sure. Might be another podcast uh, guest for me then in the future, eh? Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. He's just had a big. He just had a shoulder operation this year. Be back out next year, and um, I expect him to become British, European, and world champion himself. Yeah, solid stuff. Look, Liam, um, I really appreciate you coming onto the podcast, mate. I know you've probably got to get off and do other bits and pieces today. I've got one final yeah. question for you, bro. When I set up the podcast or when I set up my first uh, business when I was younger, I come up with a bit of a mantra and the mantra goes like this, be happy, never content. Now, if I, if I were to ask Liam Davis, what does be happy, never content mean to you? Be happy means, well, be happy, never content. I take that as um, aim for good days, like always good days days do what do what's in your heart what makes you happy in life and um never too happy and never get too comfortable and content because there's always much more to do but keep pushing be happy with where you are and um push for better love that mate thank you very much for your time uh hopefully we could do a part two when you become world champion maybe in person for sure if you ever visit London, bro, cut, make sure you come by and uh, we can we, we can meet in, in person here at the gallery. And uh, once again, really appreciate your time, mate. You're, you've been a star. Nah, thank you. Thank you for having me on. Okay, Top God bless. God bless. And we're staying in communications, mate. Thanks, Liam. Cheers. Go on, mate. Bye. Guys, before we end this episode, I have to give one more mention to this week's sponsors, iSecure Vehicles. Now, I've already mentioned their products. They are the very best in what they do. They have a wide range of different services and different systems to protect your asset and your vehicle. Head over to their website to find out a bit more. Thanks for watching this week's episode. There's going to be some more exciting guests, some big names and some really, really juicy episodes.